What if Godzilla was in Pacific Rim? What would happen? Would he end up helping the Jaegers to fight the Kaijus? Or would the Jaegers just attack him assuming that he was just on the Kaiju side? Or would Godzilla end up having to fight everybody? Well many people have talked about this ever since Pacific Rim came out, but here we're more interested in the, the wider universe, the concept of if Godzilla was just dropped into that movie universe, how would things go down? Well first we need to clarify which version of Godzilla we're talking about, because because if we're talking about the Japanese Toho Godzilla, he's going to win no matter what. Because that guy is so overpowered, he's basically god level of power to the point where he's almost like the John Cena of the monster world. You know, it's always portrayed in the Japanese movies of like, can he overcome the odds? Oh, and it's like, yeah, of course he will. He always does. You can't see him. He's John Cena. He wins all the time. So because of that, there's no doubt if we're talking about that version of Godzilla, yes, he would win. He would conquer everyone. You happy, Godzilla? Godzilla fanboys? There, I said it, alright? So a much more interesting question is, what if it was the Godzilla from the 2014 movie that was put in the Pacific Rim universe? Now it becomes much more interesting, because while that Godzilla is certainly powerful, he's not overpowered to the point of absurdity, making this kind of discussion a lot more engaging. Now in this what if series we go by Terminator logic, if a portal just opened and dropped the character in out of nowhere and they can't bring any technology or anything with them, how would they go? Now, now fortunately in the Pacific Rim universe they already have a portal, they have the breach. So we can have Godzilla just swim out of that. So the first thing we need to consider in this scenario is how humanity would react to Godzilla's arrival. On the one hand it's easy to assume that they would just consider him to be another kaiju and they go after him like they would anyone else. But that's not necessarily true because in Pacific Rim they monitor the breach at all times and they have sensors that detect lots of different information about the creatures passing through the breach. Not just their size, but also their toxicity levels, level of radiation, things like that. This is how they separate the kaijus into their various categories. So when Godzilla swims through the breach, they will immediately detect different things about him compared to the usual kaijus that come out of there. For one thing, Godzilla's radiation levels would be off the charts, considering that he survived a nuclear blast before and he has all that atomic breath. This immediately would make him stand out. But on the other hand, they would also notice that his toxicity levels are very very low since kaijus were designed to be as toxic as possible so even after you kill them they continue to be a problem their blood called kaiju blue is not only toxic but it's acidic as well so even after they're dead and they're decomposing they're poisoning everything around them they were designed this way specifically because they were a weapon godzilla is not like that however he's not some alien creature designed to hurt the planet he's a native creature of of Earth. Granted, he's way out of time, he's like millions of years old, but still, he's a native to Earth, so he doesn't pollute the environment around him the same way as the kaijus do. The next thing they would notice that's different about Godzilla is his behavior. Unlike the kaijus that come out of the breach, they go straight to the surface and then target the nearest populated area, that's not really Godzilla's deal. Godzilla in the 2014 movie, he feeds off radiation, so he mostly hangs out just on the ocean floor feeding off radiation there. He only really comes to the surface when he has a reason to, like if he has to defend his territory from intruders or if there's some radiation rich food source there on the surface, then he'll show up and have a meal. So most likely, after detecting Godzilla coming through the breach, he would basically just disappear, vanishing into the deep dark ocean in search of food in the depths, and he would basically ignore the surface. No doubt they would send Jaegers out to sort of have a look around and try to find him, but in something the size of the Pacific Ocean, even Godzilla would be near impossible to find and catch. And even if for some reason Godzilla did show up on the surface for a bit, maybe to eat some nuclear waste or something, by the time the humans fly the Jaegers in, he will have just walked back into the ocean and swam off. See, it's kind of hard to not find a kaiju because they kind of make a mess of things. Besides, kaijus, they come looking for you. Whereas with Godzilla, you would have to go looking for him. And if he didn't want to be found, he wouldn't be. But all things said, it is stated in Pacific Rim that the breach is a source of radiation due to it being a portal. So likely Godzilla would hang around that area. But even if the Jaegers dove underwater towards the breach, tracking Godzilla down, Godzilla's such a fast swimmer and the ocean depths are his home, so he could outrun and outmaneuver them very easily. And most of the Jaeger weaponry is designed for fighting up on the surface. So they would really be limited in the amount of damage they could actually do to Godzilla, while he would not be limited at all in the damage he could do to them. And if he 
viewed their intrusion as an invasion on his territory, those Jaegers would be underwater scrap metal very, very quickly. However, the 2014 Godzilla does seem to be much more tolerant of humans than previous incarnations. He never seems to maliciously smash buildings, and even after the military directly attacks him, he doesn't retaliate. So if I had to guess, in any confrontation with the Jaegers, whether it would be on the surface or underwater, most likely Godzilla would just turn around and swim off. See, Godzilla's territory isn't threatened by humans in the same kind of way that a lion's territory isn't threatened by ants. Even if the ants sting the lion's paws from time to time while he's lying in the shade of a tree, he doesn't care, he just gets up and walks to the next shady tree and just goes to sleep there. But if another lion strolls into his territory, he can't just keep napping, he has to get up and go fight it. Likewise, when kaiju swim out of that breach and make their way to the surface, Godzilla must give chase. He must go after them, he must take them out, because he has to defend his territory. Now if Godzilla is right next to the breach at the time that they come out, the fight will happen underwater. But even though Godzilla would stay near the breach, the ocean is still a big enough place and the kaiju seem to be able to reach the surface in just a matter of minutes, so likely the battle would take place on the surface. This would also mean that Godzilla would arrive on the scene before the Jaegers do, because he will be right on the tails of the kaiju right from the beginning, right from them coming out of the bridge. So now we enter the Godzilla versus kaiju who would win part of this video. As you can see from this size comparison, some of the kaijus are actually a bit taller than Godzilla, but the big difference is their weight. The biggest of the kaijus weighs 7,000 tons, while Godzilla from the 2014 movie weighs 90,000 tons, more than 10 times heavier than the heaviest kaiju, even though some of them are actually taller than him. You know, perhaps the uh, alien designers of the kaijus kept their weight down to make them perhaps more agile, but 90,000 tons? Could you imagine how dense Godzilla's body must be? At 90,000 tons, I would imagine, even if the kaiju succeeded in even ripping off one of Godzilla's protective shell armor plates, his tissue under that would still be so tough, so dense, I doubt the kaiju would even really be able to do significant damage. It'd be like trying to chop down a tree with a spoon. And even if we assume that this is a double event, like in the end of Pacific Rim, at 90,000 tons, I don't care how much more agile the kaiju may be, Godzilla would be an immovable object. The kaijus would just bounce off him. And once they did get in close, of course, and Godzilla grabs a hold of them, it's over. No amount of slashing or wriggling to try and get free will work against 90,000 tons. And once those big jaws sink into that soft kaiju tissue, it's over. As to whether a mouth filled with toxic acidic kaiju blood would make Godzilla sick, or maybe even eventually kill him, I don't think we would even have time to find that out anyway. Because as tough as the 2014 Godzilla is, as we saw in his battle with the Mutos at the end of the movie, he does have a tendency to get tired fairly quickly. Quickly, which is not surprising considering all that weight he has to move around. But at one point in the fight he keels over with exhaustion and later when the fight is over he passes out for many hours until he wakes up the next day and then can walk off. But this shows a very notable vulnerability for Godzilla. He can't fight for extended periods of time. He doesn't have the stamina with all that weight he has to carry. Which means a less powerful opponent could in theory gain a victory over Godzilla if the opponent succeeds in dragging the fight out long enough. So after Godzilla is done dispatching the two kaijus, you know what's going to happen then. The Jaegers will arrive. And here is when we reach the crucial point. Godzilla is tired, on the point of collapsing, only a fraction of the strength he had before, and he doesn't have time to rest. He's vulnerable. But what would the Jaegers do? Would they have figured out by this time that Godzilla is actually an ally, and would they let him go? Well, remember in the 2014 Godzilla, how the military was determined upon killing all three of the monsters, even though it was very obvious that Godzilla was on their side. Well, do you think the military in Pacific Rim is just as dumb as that military? Obviously they are. I mean, these are the same people that think it's a great idea to keep these monsters out with a giant wall, even though it's already been established the wall doesn't keep them out. 
So yes, they would absolutely be dumb enough to kill Godzilla even after it's obvious he's on their side. At which point, Godzilla would have to use his most powerful weapon. The last card he has to play, his atomic breath. Would Godzilla's atomic breath be enough to liquefy these Jaegers so that he can jump back in the ocean and swim off and live to fight another day? Well, the Japanese Toho Godzilla, yes, of course. But the 2014 Godzilla? I'm not sure. Remember, in Pacific Rim, the Kaijus have a acidic and radioactive blood. Plus many of them shoot out like sort of electronic waves and all kinds of weird stuff. So the Jaegers, they have to be specially armored. Otherwise, every time they got any kaiju blood on them, they would just melt. So would all of this extra armor that protects them against this toxic acid radiation and all that, would that give them some extra protection against Godzilla's atomic breath? Well, I think it would be silly to not at least say it would provide some level of protection. And don't forget that there's about six different Jaegers in Pacific Rim. So even if Godzilla melts like three of them with his atomic breath, there's still three more left. And Godzilla will probably collapse in exhaustion again for a couple of hours after using his atomic breath, just like he did in the 2014 Godzilla. So do you think a couple of Jaegers having all night long to go to work on an unconscious Godzilla could kill him before the morning? Obviously they could. Plus the 2014 Godzilla does seem to be vulnerable around the gills on the side of his neck. A missile hit him in the side of the neck and causing him to reel back in pain. The Mutos targeted his gills, succeeding in taking him down in the process. You know, a Jaeger with a plasma cannon shot right down the gills of an exhausted and borderline unconscious Godzilla? That should do the trick. Or what about that fancy sword? Just shove it right down Godzilla's throat. I mean, that's certainly not going to be helpful. Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know if you need any artwork done, the guy you want to talk to is my buddy Jack Birchfield. He designed the book cover for the book that I'm going to be releasing pretty shortly. He won the uh, logo making competition for Movie Mania, but this guy does so much more than that. He does comic books, he does puppets, he does full entire costumes, he's a sculptor, he's a writer, he's really a jack of all trades. I'm extremely happy with the work that he's done. If you need any kind of artistic work done for pretty much any project, Jack is the guy you want to talk to. You can contact him on his website or his Instagram, all of which are linked below. All right, let's get back into it. So sadly, I think if Godzilla from the 2014 movie did appear in Pacific Rim, him battling the Kaijus would wear him out and then the Jaegers would finish him off. But hey, these are just my thoughts and I'm just one guy. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts down in the comments section below. I am Bandit, this is Bandit Incorporated. Until next time, I will see you guys in the comments.